Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the women's Nike Magista Obra 2 in the Spark Brilliance Olympic Pack. Now included with the shoes inside the box is a string bag. The string bag, as you can see, is white in color with total crimson orange strings and Magista branding on the front. And then of course, along with the bag, you get the shoes themselves, which I have right here. Now this is, like you guys just heard me say, a women's variation of the Magista Obra 2. Now, women's fit isn't really a thing anymore. So aside from the sizing, which is different from the men's version, the actual shape, construction, and overall fit of the shoe is not any different at all. So obviously, if you're a girl and you wear regularly wear women's shoes, just go with these. It's, it's technically the women's variation of the shoe. But if you're a guy and you wanna wear this particular colorway or really any of the Nike women's models, all you have to do is do a sizing conversion to have the proper fit. Because like I said, everything about the shoe aside from the colorway and the way the sizing works is identical to the men's variation. So we're gonna be discussing that in today's video. I'm gonna tell you how to actually convert the size should you wanna wear these, um, just to know what your equivalent men's or women's size would be. Uh, we're gonna talk tech specs, performance features, take a look at the weight of the shoe, as well as talk about how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more about the women's Magista Obra 2, stick around watch the entire video if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself check out the review page on my website there'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description and on that page you will find buy it now links with exclusive sr4u coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal 300 retail price so again if you're interested in a pair pop up on screen link in the description go ahead and check it out and with that being said let's get right into the review all right so here is a look at the women's obra twos on feet we're going to start the video like this so we can talk about how these things fit and feel and of course how the sizing works because as you can see I'm wearing some women's Obra 2s. Now the first thing I'll say is this aside from the way the sizing works and the colorway of course there's no physical difference between the women's Obra 2 and the men's Obra 2. The construction is the same, the materials are the same, the shape and general fit is the same. Like I said the only thing that's different is the colorway and the way the sizing works. So if you do want to wear these and you are a guy and you normally go by men's sizing, you just have to do one simple conversion for any Nike women's model because none of them are women's fit specific, implying a more narrow fit. That's just not the case. They don't do that anymore. They did a long time ago, but that is not the case anymore. So normally in the men's version of the Obra 2, I wear a size 9.5 US. In the women's variation, Basically, all you have to do is go from your men's size and add one and a half sizes. So I go from a men's nine and a half US to a women's 11 US for the equivalent fit. Hopefully that makes sense. Take your men's size, go up one and a half sizes in the women's variation, and you'll have the equivalent men's size. So as an example, if you're a men's size eight US, you would wear a women's nine and a half US. You go up one and a half sizes. It's just that simple and you have the equivalent fit. Now they make these women's shoes generally up to a size 12 US in women's, which is the equivalent of a 10 and a half men's. So if you wear bigger than a 10 and a half men's, unfortunately, these are gonna be unavailable to you. Uh, but if you wear a 10 and a half or below, you can basically get any of the women's variations. So just keep that in mind if you are planning on picking these up. Uh, size wise, still the same. So the Magista line runs about a half size small. That's where I wear a nine and a half instead of a usual size nine. So stick with that. Again, just go up one and a half sizes and you will have the proper or equivalent size in the women's variation. As far as the overall fit and feel of the shoe is concerned, the Obra 2 fits really, really nicely. It's got a decent amount of width to it to where they will be suitable for most people. The upper is very soft against your foot. It has good flexibility to it. Uh, and it's just a comfortable shoe overall, especially given that this is a mid-cut model. The fit in the heel, feels surprisingly normal. It doesn't feel like any of the mid-cut models from Nike uh, before this one. Uh, it doesn't really feel abnormal. There's not really any extra pressure or any kind of discomfort in the heel area. They're pretty much good to go, as always, with a new pair of shoes. Take it easy the first couple of wears. Just really make sure that they feel uh, comfortable for the long run. Don't wear them straight into a game or anything like that. Uh, but as long as you take your time with the break-in process, you're unlikely to have really any issues with discomfort 
with the Obra 2. Width-wise, I think they're going to be suitable for most people. Again, they do have a decent amount of width to them. Definitely wider than the previous generation of Magista Obra, uh, but they're not really going to stretch all that much. So as long as you don't have excessively wide feet, you shouldn't have too many issues with the width on this shoe. And then of course we have the laces. On my left foot, we have the royal blue laces that come with the shoes. And on my left, uh, my right foot, sorry, I have the neon yellow reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You'll find a little pop-up on screen as well as a direct link down below in the description that'll take you right to the website. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check it out. Next, let's talk tech specs with the Magista Obra 2. Now, like I just got finished saying multiple times in this video already, there is no physical difference between the Obra 2 in the women's variation and the men's variation aside from the color and the way the sizing works. The materials, the shape, the construction, everything is identical. They have not changed a thing. So if you guys do want kind of as much detailed information on the performance of this shoe as possible, there'll be a little pop-up on screen to my playtest vlog video that I did of the Obra 2 or I actually wear them for the first time and kind of just share my personal opinions on how they fit, feel, and perform. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. I think you will find it pretty informative. But for the sake of this one, we're gonna go over the basic tech specs that you should know if you are planning on picking these up or were at all considering them. So the upper is entirely made from Flyknit. That is, in my opinion, the main draw of this particular shoe. Uh, the second main draw being the aspect that it is a mid-cut option uh, with the dynamic fit collar. But the Flyknit upper to me is the most impressive aspect of the Obra 2. Uh, What's cool about it is the actual shape that it has. Not only is there texturing on the surface, there's texturing on the inside. So the, the texture that you feel when you run your finger along the outside of the shoe, when you press your fingers on the inside of the shoe, you feel that exact same texturing. And the impact that that has on touch is that it has kind of a dampening effect. So the knitted material uh, provides one layer of thickness. Then you have uh, the inside padded liner, which kind of just gives you a softer sensation against your foot. The whole upper as a whole is quite flexible and does have that sock-like sensation on your foot. And then the actual texturing itself, you don't feel it or notice it until you actually make contact with the ball. And the heaviest texturing is in the kind of mapped out spots right here. On this particular colorway, it's not quite as noticeable as what we saw on the launch color. Uh, but you can see right here where it's a little bit of a lighter blue color. Uh, you have a little bit more heavy texturing with this podular texturing. So what's happening is at the highest point, the thickness of the upper or the point is 4.5 millimeters from your foot. And then when it makes contact with the ball, it flattens out and that act of compressing, like I said, has a dampening effect. This is not going to improve your touch. It's not gonna improve your abilities to play in any way at all. That's down to you, not the shoes on your feet. But the feedback that it provides, uh, while still maintaining the dampening effect, is what's so unique. Uh, you can put memory foam in a shoe, but generally that takes away from the actual sensation of feeling the ball. You get the dampening effect of for example, a memory foam with this shoe without taking away that feedback, the sensation for the ball, which I think is what's so unique about this particular upper and the way that it just feels in general. Uh, not overly thick. I wouldn't say that's a padded shoe by any means, uh, but it's not overly thin either. It's not quite as thin as what you're going to find from, for example, the Superfly 5, which is the other Flyknit mid-cut model from Nike. Uh, not quite as thin either as the Hypervenom Phantom 2 or Hypervenom Finish models, which I know a lot of people like to compare this to, but honestly, it doesn't feel anything like those shoes in terms of just touch on the ball and the way the shoe fits and feels in general. You're going to find that the upper is covered in a Nike skin material, which does have a slightly grippier sensation than what we saw on the previous Obra and previous Mercurial Superfly models. Uh, so it does have not necessarily a grippy feel on the ball, but like I said, it's a little bit grippier than the previous generation. And of course, ACC All Conditions Control acting as your wet control element is a feature as you'll get on all the top end models from Nike, uh, but something that isn't gonna have a major impact on the overall kind of experience of the shoe, I guess is the best way to put it. As another reinforcement element for the upper, kind of just adding structure without 
adding stiffness, if that makes any sense. You have your flywire cables, which you can kind of see right here. Uh, they run from the base of the sole into the lacing system. So when you slide your foot in, pull the laces tight, it pulls on those cables and it does a really good job of helping to secure your foot and lock it in place on the inside of the shoe, giving you a surprisingly responsive feel given how comfortable and flexible the shoe actually is on your foot. Uh, now running through the middle of the shoe where the laces are positioned, kind of slightly off centered to the medial side, you have elasticated fly knit that flows into the collar as well. The collar, fully stretchy elasticated fly knit, no structure to it, no stability, there's no ankle support here. There's minimal protection, just a thin layer of this material. Uh, there's no performance benefit, like I said, to the mid-cut aspect, uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe. In terms of what's unique about this particular collar in comparison to every other mid-cut model Nike has ever come out with, is that this does have kind of the top rounded edges on the sides and then it kind of dips down at the front and back, giving it a more anatomical shape and a little bit of a different look as well. The actual uh, sides of the ankle kind of bulge out like the shape of an ankle bone as well. So I really like that aspect. This fits your ankle better than any other collar Nike has put out so far. Uh, so that's definitely a plus, but again, it doesn't really impact performance in any way. It just feels a little bit nicer on, on your ankle, which is really the only benefit of this particular design. Moving on to the back, you do have an internal heel counter made from a plastic material. And then the way that it's cut along with the heel liner, I think is the biggest improvement in terms of mid-cut shoes from Nike. It's a synthetic suede lining material with a decent amount of padding. And for whatever reason, it's, it has to be the way they cut it. They don't really fit like mid-cut shoes or fit like previous mid-cut shoes from Nike. This has kind of more of a normal sensation. You don't really have to get used to anything. There's no rubbing on the back of your heel. Uh, they really just feel good to go from right out of the box given that you get the proper fit. So for me, that is definitely a positive aspect of this particular mid-cut shoe from Nike. Inside, there is an insole, of course, fully removable mesh liner on top, yellow foam, uh, pretty much the same insole you're gonna find on the Tiempo Legend 6. The yellow foam has some decent thickness to it. And then these blue little sections here are added pour-on foam inserts, which you'll find in the heel, as well as in the forefoot and toe box area, just giving you a little bit more kind of impact protection. So pretty solid insole, no complaints in that regard. Inside as well, you can see those little black dots. They have those in the heel as well as in the forefoot, and basically just a little bit of a grip texturing to actually grip the underside of the insole and prevent it from sliding around on the inside of the shoe, which I think is a really cool idea that they implemented here on the Obra 2. Moving on to the outsole, it's technically the same uh, kind of compressed nylon material that we did see on uh, the uh, Obra 1. Uh, this time around, I would say it's a touch more flexible out of the box. It still has some good kind of rigidity to it, um, which does get more flexible over time, but it gives the shoe a nice solid sensation overall. It is completely flat not like the Superfly 5, which is a little bit of a different sole plate design, but still feels quite good. And then of course you do get the new uh, Magista stud pattern, which is consistent across the entire line. They designed this specifically around rotational movements, uh, meaning that when your foot is planted, you kind of have that freedom to twist and pivot while still maintaining good traction. And you definitely do get that sensation from this particular stud pattern. It's a little bit lower to the ground in comparison to the previous Magista stud pattern. So uh, stability, I would say, is ever so slightly improved. Not quite as aggressive, but not something that I would say feels that much different from the previous stud pattern either. It looks more unique uh, than it actually feels, if that makes any sense. So traction-wise, being that this is a firm ground stud pattern on natural grass, it gets the job done. I had no issues whatsoever, no major complaints. It's a good stud pattern. I think for most people, like I said, it definitely will get the job done. From a weight standpoint, the Obra 2 is relatively lightweight, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna weigh them for you today in real time using this scale. Now keep in mind that this pair is in brand new condition and is a women's size 11 US, the equivalent of a men's 9.5 US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 7.6 ounces, the equivalent of 215 grams. So kind of the mid seven ounce mark, which like I said, is relatively lightweight. They by no means feel heavy on your feet. There are of course lighter shoes out there, but I really don't feel like too many people interested in the Obra 2 are looking for the lightest possible shoe anyway. So again, if you like what this shoe has on offer, you're unlikely to have any issues with how much they weigh. As far as the colorway is concerned, these actually look really, really nice in person. I think the one aspect of this colorway that is gonna throw people off when they see it in person for the first time is that these aren't a bright white upper. This is pure platinum, which 
in the form of flying it looks like a really really light gray if that makes any sense you can see it kind of across the upper hopefully that comes through on camera it has the clear nike skin covering as well that gives it a slightly darker look even if you look at the collar itself the exposed flying it when it's mixed in with the blue on the outside here it almost looks like white but on the inside when it's a little bit more solid it definitely looks like more of a light gray so again hopefully that's coming through on camera uh, but i just wanted people to know that that this is not white and blue it's pure platinum and blue um, which like i said has more of kind of like an off-white look to it the official colors listed on the shoe are pure platinum bright crimson racer blue blue cap volt as well as blue tint so there's an array of different shades of blue on this particular shoe as you can pretty clearly see the little weather mapped areas right here are kind of like a lighter blue color um, which looks pretty cool accented with the rest of the pure platinum upper uh, you have blue laces which i believe is the racer blue kind of like a royal color you have that running through the collar and heel area as well um, you have your uh, bright crimson uh, nike swoosh which is kind of like a bright orange color on the lateral and medial side the acc branding is orange in color same for the magista branding running down the back of the heel and then moving on to the sole plate it has kind of like a pearl finish for the outside edge then it turns into like a blue tint color and then you have volt yellow for the tips of the studs and you can see the studs themselves almost are different shades of volt and the reasoning for that is you have solid volt yellow plastic on the inside with a volt yellow tip uh, with a clear tip stud and then this is just translucent volt yellow tinted so that's why they look a little bit different it's not a mistake it's just two different ways of achieving volt yellow if that makes any sense but it actually looks kind of cool um, as a final product so let me know what you guys think of these down below in the comment section do you like how these look why or why not definitely a lot more simple than what we saw on the launch colorway of the obra 2 uh, but with that being said i'll leave you to my final thoughts all right guys that is it for my review of the women's spark brilliance pack olympic nike magista obra 2 if you guys are interested in more info or interested in a pair for yourself be sure to check out the review page on my website that'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video or you can click the little i on screen on that page you will find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $300 retail price. If you have any questions at all regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.